My name is Gen Paparista, and I'm a, a systems engineer with AWR. And today I wanted to talk about our uh, new developments in, in uh, related to phased arrays that, uh, that we're offering in the, the next release of our product. So uh, what is the, what is the, 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 the reasons for actually uh, going through these efforts? Uh, currently, the, the phased arrays that, uh, that people simulate have been uh, actually in the, the, maybe in the few hundreds of elements. However, we really have seen implementations where people use thousands of elements. And we want to make it actually easy to configure the phased arrays. You know, when you have an array with 10, 16 elements, it's really easy to configure individu individual elements. But once you start moving into the hundreds and thousands, it becomes really complicated. So we want to make, uh, provide a way of configuring these arrays by using a, a graphical user inter interface that makes it uh, easy for the customer to use, uh, providing uh, configuration via uh, equations or even data files where you do configurations in, in other tools and you bring them into our simulation environment. Uh, <clears throat> if you start adding individual elements for every element of the array and you start moving into hundreds and thousands of elements, then you pretty quickly realize that there is a lot of data being passed between uh, discrete elements in, in, in one of our system diagrams. And the math internally, it, it's not extremely complicated, but what becomes a bottleneck is really passing the data from one block to the other, and the simulation starts slowing down pretty quickly when you hit uh, several hundred elements, and uh, what we were trying to do with this new c capability is to, uh, to mitigate this, this uh, bottleneck and, and allow the simulation to actually run a lot faster. The next thing is <clears throat> we want to uh, provide the capability of, imple of implementing various beamforming algorithms. And they can be standard algorithms or they can be custom algorithms that customers can develop on their own or, or even develop them on third-party tools and then bring them into our uh, simulation environment. In terms of uh, characterization of the phased array, uh, we know that you know, phased arrays uh, can be looked at as, as just ideal arrays, but then the next step in the design process is <coughs> excuse me, inclusion of, of uh, a lot of RF impairments, and uh, uh, we want to be able to characterize the RF links of the arrays or array clusters. So this new block is providing capability that, uh, that we can actually achieve that. So as I mentioned, you can, you can see here in the bottom of the slide, it's a uh, typical implementation that we've used in the past for, you know, in this case, it's just a simple four element array where each element has their own uh, RF chain. And, and as I mentioned, this is, you know, a pretty small array. And then you can imagine how by, by, uh, by adding, you know, a few tens of, of these elements in the array, the number of components that we have in, in, uh, in our system diagram just blows up. So what we really want to do is if we want to replicate this functionality, but rather than build everything with these discrete components, we want to include everything in a, in a single uh, block. And what we want to achieve is to, de to be able to define gain and phase offset for each element, to specify the RF link and, uh, for, for each of the elements, and also provide the, you know, the, the ability of implementing uh, beamforming algorithms. So uh, in a nutshell, what we're offering in, with a new VSS phased array is uh, this, uh, this array is actually capable of simulating very large phased arrays. We simulate you know, several thousand elements, and then we don't really uh, see a, any, uh, a major uh, hit in terms of simulation speed. We also want to be able to accommodate uh, configuration of standard uh, designs, st uh, standard architectures, 
in terms of rectangular, triangular lattices, or, but also we want to provide the customer with the, the ability of uh, implementing their own um, uh, architectures. We also offer uh, several custom tapers, gain, gain uh, tapers, and again, we also have the capability of, of uh, implementing uh, custom tapers. Um, another thing to consider is the, the signal dis distribution at the front end of a uh, uh, transmit phase array, or uh, which in this case we, we have options for, um, for several schemes, and I'll, I'll show them in the next slide or so. Uh, uh, what's important to, to, to many of our customers is uh, in being able to implement hardware impairments. And by what I mean by that is arrays are not always ideal. There are certain impairments that become uh, more and more critical as arrays become larger. So I'll show you some of these impairments that we, we uh, have included in our uh, system tool. Then we move on to the uh, characterization of individual er elements of the array. Um, many of these designs would either use clusters of arrays or it would just use uh, and then RF, uh, a common RF link for them or some of them would actually use individual RF links for each of the arrays and then we provide a, a way of doing that. And the and, uh, last item is that we actually want to make sure that we provide frequency dependency on this model. So here's uh, <clears throat> how uh, our, uh, one of you know what we uh, provide in terms of defining a custom uh, 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 a standard lattice. We we define our uh, our lattice by these parameters a and b, and the angle gamma, which if set to 90 degrees would provide you a rectangular lattice, and you send it to pi over three, and then this will become a, a classical triangular lattice. But we allow any value of, of these three parameters, so you'd be able to, to uh, actually get a, a, a certain customization of this structure. And uh, we, we allow the user to define how many elements they use in, you know, along the x and the y axis. But if you're not happy with this capability, we also have a user-defined option where you Define, define how many elements you have in the array, and then you pro provide the X and Y locations for every single element of the array. And uh, that is something that a lot of, you know, some of our customers use it for generating these circular arrays that actually look pretty random. Um, another, uh, as I mentioned, an another option is the, the gain tapers. We provide, you know, standard tapers like Dolph Chebyshev and uh, Taylor. But uh, we also allow the user to implement their own uh, custom tapers. The, in terms of the, the front end, we, you know, we have, a, you know, in terms of front end, we, we um, provide options uh, for, let's say, lossless Wilkinson dividers or power dividers or voltage dividers. Uh, we, you know, the we provide, you know, uh, we can actually have different units in terms of the uh, distance, and by using metric or uh, standard units, then then we can provide frequency dependency on the yeah, on the array response. Uh, and then down here, we this is what uh, the, the section about the the array imperfections. We allow you to have imperfections, you know, in terms of the x and y locations you know, off of the ideal locations. And another uh, issue that we've seen with the really large arrays is when you, when you uh, have the signal hitting the array, it, it does not hit all the elements at the same time. There is a propagation delay, you know, when you, when you uh, try to feed a really large array. So the way we do that is by defining a phase offset for the exciting signal to the array. Uh, the other thing we do is that we allow the user to either turn off certain elements of the array or uh, define a failure rate and then see the, you know, the performance of the array when, when you have a, a random failure in the, in the array elements. Uh, in terms of uh, element char uh, characterization, we, uh, we can 
actually use a configuration file which can be generated by using RF links for, for each of the elements. And then these, uh, these RF links, they, they can be uh, characterized in, you know, via lab measurements or other external tools of, of, of your choice. Uh, then, again, we can either we can either define this the um, this um, characteristics of each RF link individually, or we can provide um, average char um, characteristics and then allow for for variance so that we internally we randomly generate this uh, RF link. Let's say you have a, a certain gain for each of the elements, you can define a, an average gain and allow for a variance. So we randomly pick this, this gain or, or, um, uh, or IP3 or, 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 or so on. Um, we can also use our VSS environment to automate this RF link characterization, which means that we can start running this these scripts that would uh, use our optimization techniques and then would, you know, when we define um, RF links that have certain variances in terms of performance, then we can, can run these scripts and then we can run over, you know, let's say several thousand elements and then just pick uh, typical uh, the values for the, uh, the RF characteristics of each individu individual link. And this actually makes it a lot easier in terms of managing the, the um, uh, characterization of very large arrays. Uh, we, as part of this development, we, we've also put together um, several test benches, and this is uh, one of the typical test benches. In this case, we are, uh, we're just driving, you know, we're driving this phased array with a tone and what we're doing, we're sweeping the theta and phi. And, and by doing that, we're calculating actually the response of the array. And in the chart in the back is just a, 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 a circular antenna pattern. In this case, a real simple 10 element array. And here in the front is really the same. Um, it is the same response but it's plotted in a, in a rectangular graph, and this allows us to actually perform a lot of uh, array measurements, such as, like, let's say, 3 dB band, uh, beam width of, a, um, of an array, or pretty much any other uh, measurement that, that you desire, since uh, we have quite a few in our, in our toolbox. And the next thing is, this phased array can become part of your overall system, and you can use our RF analysis and planning tools by including the array, and you can do all, all, you know, any type of cascaded analysis. You can do our you know, budget analysis. You can even uh, look at, at uh, 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 you can use our RF inspector to, to figure out you know, the frequency planning in your system. And furthermore, when you're, when you're done with that, you can actually drive this system with modulated signals. And you can, <clears throat> you can make this part of, a, let's say, a radar simulation where you, you'd have dynamic models, uh, uh, target models, and you'd be able to, to actually see, you know, track uh, a certain model by using a real phased array rather than, you know, try and, and, uh, and simulate it by, by oversimplified models. So in terms of ways that we use this phased array, what we try and do is really, you know, we allow for, for the customer to evaluate the array performance over a range of power levels and, and frequencies. And that, you know, would, would help you uh, actually get a better feel for the array performance. Uh, we'll be able to use any of our budget analysis measurements, such as cascaded noise figure, P1 dB, uh, P1 dB G over T, and these are typical measurements for, for these type of systems. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we provide the capability of, of evaluating the sensitivity to these hardware impairments that we mentioned. You know, we wanted to, be, to, to make sure that, uh, you know, customers are able to, to see what happens to performance of the overall system if there is, a, let's say, a, uh, if there are uh, 
imperfections in the array, if there is any failure in the array elements, etc. Uh, and then we also wanted to make sure that we we provide the ability of of uh, performing end-to-end -end simulations. So such, uh, as I mentioned, you can have a full radar simulation that is using a, a phased array uh, uh, model. So um, in conclusion, the, the, we, we've created a, a model that, can, can, uh, that is geared towards design and simulation of very large phased arrays without taking a hit in, in, in terms of uh, simulation performance. Uh, we put some effort in, in making it easy to use for, for customers and making it easy to actually configure because that becomes uh, a pretty significant effort when, when array sizes become very large. Uh, this is a, a model that allows us to, to, make, uh, to, to really shorten the design time and, and also uh, run simulations at, at reasonable uh, times. And again, we, we wanted to make sure that any array, the phased array design that we make uh, will, will closely match uh, uh, implementations in the real world. We'll, we'll provide the uh, the RF impairments and hardware impairments that, that typical arrays would, would, would see in the real implementations. And overall, we want to be able to model the RF architecture of, of, the, um, of, the of the RF links of each of the elements in the phase array, and then provide a characterization of the whole array rather than uh, have the user focus on, on characterizing individual um, elements. So uh, that's pretty much wraps up my talk if there, since we have some time, if there is any, uh, any questions. Uh, I guess not. So, thank you.